time. There in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse number 12, say what? Honor, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor thy father and thy mother, that you will live a long life. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Now today I want to talk to you certainly about a Holy Ghost filled father. All right. Because if you get a Holy Ghost filled father, you may by chance get some children that want to be saved. All right. Are y'all all right today? Oh Amen. Kind father in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we love you. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. You are God and we honor you. You are righteous and we adore you. Oh, no one can take your fame nor your blessings. We are blessed by you alone. You are our strength and the keeper and lifter of our head. So, Lord, while we excitedly talk about your word, as, as we expound your word, as we encourage your people to hear what you have to say, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. And that you would bless all the fathers, all the fathers that are being good fathers and them that are not, that they'll be better. Save and feel, heal, deliver and set free. And God, we're going to ever love you. Speak to me and through me, God. In Jesus' name, and let everyone that agrees say amen. amen. Amen again. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where, oh, would I, oh, for the Lord. Thank you. On my side, I don't know where I would be even today. Amen. Amen. We're praying for all of our families who are going through, Sister, Sister Petwe, we're praying for you and the loss of your sister. I know that Sister Wooten's mom, but your sister as well. Amen. We're praying, amen, for the Lee family as well and the Wombly family. There's so many families we're praying for. Amen. We don't have time to play. It's time to pray. I agree with Sister Pugh. It's time to pray. We in that day and time now. We need everybody in place. Amen. It takes a village to raise a child, and we can't leave one out. Amen. Amen. We, ain't, we don't have no time for no black sheep or nobody family. Right. I don't even believe in the word black sheep of a family. Amen. Amen. That one may need a little bit more love and a little bit more attention. And, and sometimes when they do, you help them. Is that all right? I want to talk to you a little bit about a Holy Ghost filled father. Right. Amen. And that way we have some Holy Ghost filled homes if the Lord permit. Amen. First, just to introduce you a little bit about our Father's Day. This is a happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. 
Amen. This is a national day that was celebrated on June 19th, way back in 1910 in the state of Washington. However, it was not until 1972 through 58 years after President Woodrow Wilson made Mother's Day an uh, official day, honoring fathers because the national holiday in the United States Father Day occurred on Sunday the 20th in 2021. So today is Father's Day, even though it began so many years ago. Amen. Father's Day was founded by in Spokane, Washington at the YMCA in 1910 by Sonora Smart Dodd. Amen. Who was born in Arkansas. The first celebration was in Smokin YMCA on June 19, 1910. Her father, a Civil War veteran, William Jackson Smart, was a single parent who raised six children there. So do you understand that Father's Day is just not about a bow tie or a tie? Amen. It's giving honor to men who are doing their job. Is that all right? Amen. And you don't do nothing, you're not getting that. Y'all ain't going to help me. We want to honor the father because they are so important. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days will be long upon the land. And when we're talking about a good father, we ask, what is the characteristics of a father? Right. Amen. While male characteristics drive a man to head the household, the ability to handle authority and responsibility defines a good father. You hear me? Important traits of a good father encompass being a leader, a loving figure who meets the needs of the children and authority that guides them accordingly. Let me explain that if I can. Not only must you be a loving father, you must do your authority rule the same in love. Amen. Some people think hollering at children is the best way and pulling on them and jerking on them. You got to love children. Amen. If you want, a good father will not be hurting his children. Y'all going to help me. Amen. What should a dad be like? What should a dad? A father is a person who loves and respects his children. Amen. Who loves and respects his children. Right. He is honest and he never rejects nor neglects. He's like, you're my child. You ain't no good father. My Lord, if you, your child, I don't care if it don't look like you, that's your child. Take care of your children. He is the greatest in your eyes. Every child that see their father feel like dad is the greatest in their eyes and that they will ever see. And when children, they see daddy walking the door, they get so happy. I don't know if I'm in the right house here. Mama can be there all day, but when little baby see daddy, look like if he's a good daddy, I'm going to say that. They look like their little life wake up. Sometimes they ain't got no time, but you need to make time. That child been waiting on you all day, and you ought to be glad to see your children. No man, there's no man like a good father nowhere to be found. What is the meaning of being a father? A father is someone who is willing to step up, take care of the children and the family. Step up to the plate. Y'all hear that a lot. Father is someone who's always a step ahead of the game. Right. He's the dad to the children. And sometimes he, they may not be his children. But he will step up to the plate because some fathers are just sperm donors. Y'all going to know that? But a good dad will take up the role as he's not my blood, but he sure is my love. Y'all going to help me today. Now y'all can make me preach and be through. I just go on with it. What is the role and responsibilities of a father? A father role in a family is very important. Amen. His job is to provide for the family. Amen. Amen. By working, not sitting at home on, with the wife's house shoes on and remote. Y'all going to help me? Right. He must discipline, but yet nurture. Amen. Let me say that again. You don't need to be beating nobody the children if you ain't nurturing them. Amen. You know, just being on children ain't the answer. Sometimes they need nurturing. Amen. Amen. Holding your daughters, holding your son. All right. Good to see a father kiss on his son and his daughter. Amen. See, I'd rather them kiss you than them kissing at something else. Y'all gonna help me today? 
A father plays an important role in strengthening the family. Amen. The strength of the family is in the father. Yes, yes. You don't want to see the house on fire and he run out there and got the water hose. Some of y'all get yourself out there. When a fire going on, you the last one to leave. If you get scarred or burned, it's because you can about your family. Amen. Amen. Y'all going to help me today? Amen. His love for the family is ultimate. Yes. The ultimate gift he would give is to take care of his family. Amen. A father takes all hardships to support the family. He'll work one job. If that ain't enough, he'll do two. I've heard of some fathers doing three jobs just to make sure there's enough food on the table. Amen. Remember one time the lady told her husband, I done broke my leg. He said, well, I better get another job. The little boy looked at his mama and said, mama, your leg ain't broke, but everybody else in the house knew what that meant. I mean, they was getting ready to expect another baby. Daddy had to get some more money in the house. And I can't understand how a great-grandfather, grandfather, can raise 17 children. All of them be blessed, get a bath, smell good, look good, hair comb, hair cut. And nobody's fussing and fighting. Everybody loves it. And you got one child, you can't make that one child behave. Now, another thing I can't understand how grandmom and granddad could raise all them children and didn't need a judge. Are oh, y'all going to help me? Y'all ain't going to leave me out by myself, are you? Raise all the children and didn't need no judge with a black robe to tell you to pay child support. And you got one child and can't keep up with that one. There's something really, the power of the Holy Ghost is needed in the Father. If the Father is spirit-led, the family can follow a spirit-led leader. Y'all gonna help me today? Amen. Y'all came for cookies and milk. I only got meat. A father takes the hardship to support the family and his role is prominent in promoting overall development of the family. The overall care and development, not just what the father wants. It's not just the yard being cleaned. It's not just the house being painted. But you want to make sure your children are well developed. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Make sure the wife, the mother of your children is taken care of. When you're talking about a good father, you need power of God to help you get that together. Amen. Good looks ain't going to do that. Harvard University won't help you on that either. You got to be down on your knees in prayer. How do I keep my family alive? Because every one of your children got a different personality. Amen. And you got to know how to clock in and pray for every child. Talking to children ain't enough. You got to love them now. I mean the ultimate sacrifice. You got to let them know you're in there. Oh, I want to preach. What makes an effective, an effective father? Being present, number one, and involved. Huh? I got to go to work. Well, you need to set your schedule so you have time for your children. When it's honor day at school, you want them to have good grades. You tell your boss, it's honor day at my children's school. My lunch break got to be two hours. If I don't take a lunch break for the rest of the week, give me all my lunch breaks so I can be with my child. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Get you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you eat it on your break. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Just because we may be uh, ones providing for the family, does that mean that we should be Leave the duty of exclusively to the mother. All right. Just because you going out there getting a the check don't mean the mother got to do everything. That's right. Learn how to change the diapers. Learn how to fix food. Learn how to clean the house. You never know when the mother may get sick. You don't know. Say you're sorry. Oh, that's, oh, Lord. One, a trace of a good father when he is wrong to apologize. One thing little boys and girls hate from their father is when they're wrong and they don't say, I'm sorry. That breaks a child's spirit. You know why? Because if you take ownership of your own mistakes, you, you can help them take ownership of their mistakes. But if you don't see no wrong in your own eyes, how are you going to bash them all down when they get wrong? It amazes me how we get amnesia when our children do wrong and we wrong ourselves. Some of the same stuff that children get in, we done got in years ago, but we get amnesia. You need to clock out, go back and remember what you went through, rewind, remember how you got your whooping for cutting up. And be more patient and predictable to your children. That I know you're going to have some failures. I had some. You don't have to tell them all your business, but at least introducing them mercy and grace. 
Not only that, but spend quality time with your family. Teach them what quality. See, sometimes dad will be in the room eating his dinner. Mama be in another room eating their dinner. Children be in their room eating their dinner. Ain't nobody eating together. When is family time? When is your son's time? When is your daughter's time? Huh? For just you and the children alone. Give mama a break and say, you know what? Today is my day. Y'all ain't going to help me. Y'all ain't used to this kind of preaching no way. Take a day off and say, mama, I got the children for the whole day. It'll really make mama happy. I got them for the whole week. No, you ain't got to change nothing. I'm doing everything. And I'm going to go to work. You talking about a blessing? Now you're teaching your children. Because if your children see you fussing, they're going to fuss. If they see you beating on your wife, your whatever, they're going to beat on their wife or significant other. You all hear me? If they see you cursing, they're going to curse. If they see you, and that's what I love about my parents. If they ever had a disagreement, they waited till we went to school. One day I wanted to see if they was fussing in their room. I put a little glass. Y'all trying to be in stickers. Put a little glass on the door. My mom must have heard the glass on the door. She got him walk up just as quiet to the door. When she opened the door, I thought I needed to pray and see Jesus. Scared the life out of me. She said, what you doing? I just wanted to see what they were doing. You know, if you don't see your parents fussing, you ain't got no need to fuss. You don't see them throwing one another across the living room table, then you ought not do it either. I remember one man, he's gone on to rest with the Lord. Told me how he used to beat his wife till he knocked her out. And I, I, he said, well, my daddy did it to my mama. And see, these patterns are learned. No father, no good provider, no good daddy should ever touch. Y'all ain't going to help me. Don't come praying to me once you done got a black eye. Say amen now. <laughs> Take interest in their interests. Some of your children have interests. I'm talking to the fathers. That, that you may not like. I want my son to play football. Well, he might want to work on cars. Well, my, I, want, I want to be a, a basketball player. Well, he may want to be an artist. But you can't talk down on it if you're going to be a good father. Because everybody don't work and play football. Some people put computers together. Y'all going to help me? There's some men who are good painters and constructors. Everybody ain't playing football. And if you build your life about what you want, you go out there and play football. Get your neck broken, then you see what it is. Because we push children where they shouldn't be pushed. I'm not saying don't direct them, but don't make them a God. And don't you try to be their God. They need a daddy, a good spirit-filled daddy. Good qualities of a good father include spending time actively involved in your children's life. Modeling a behavior that is expected of you in, the, in their presence. If they see a good daddy, they gonna be, they have no excuse to be a good son. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you see your, your, your daddy treating your mama with love, you're going to want to treat your wife with love. Y'all help me. If you see your daddy beating up on your mama, you're going to want to find somebody you can beat up on. But you better watch out for Shaquita because she may knock you straight out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Taking ownership. We'll, uh, listen, taking ownership, uh, you're going to make some mistakes when you do that. And when you make mistakes, apologize for them. I'm talking about the qualities of a good father. Limiting the children's time on technology. These children got these little phones, and you just letting them go on with their little phone, and they got their little guy, and you ain't saying nothing to them. They don't hardly know anything you like. They don't know your favorite color. They don't even know when your birthday is sometimes because they're so wrapped up in technology. These phones, these little gadgets and took the children's mind away from the house. Y'all help me today. If you're guilty, say amen twice or something. When your children are with you, they need to smell you. They need to spend time with you. Amen. You need to be in their face and let them know that I'm your father and I want to spend the rest of the day with you. And then treating their mother with dignity. I, I've seen mothers have uh, children with men. And say, your dad ain't no good. You're just like your dad. Well, you slept with him. He ain't nothing but dirt. Well, what do you think you were sleeping with dirt? 
You have to be careful with what you say. Now you want to take daddy to court and the child is looking at you. Done talked about their daddy. Done talked him down. And he don't have no impression about what he's learning. And then when you die out the picture, the child still don't have no relationship with nobody. I don't think any good father ought to talk against the mother. I don't think any good mother ought to talk against the father. Because what y'all slept together and made, that's y'all together. Preach, pastor, I'm going to do it. And be a good listener. I'm talking about being a good father. Be a good listener. You don't have to always give advice. Just listen. You don't know. Your children might have been raped, but they'll never be able to tell you because you out talk. Don't you embarrass me. Don't you? Listen to what they're saying. Sometimes just listen. You can learn more from your child. I'm just trying to help y'all today. I'll be through soon. Understanding that our children have different options. You got your way or the highway. Well, they'll never make it. And then when they leave you, they get buck wild. When they get out the house, you wonder who that, who, where you come from. Well, you done locked them down on your opinion. Right. You got to give them room to breathe. Tell me how to say breathe. breathe. Amen. Breathe. What does it mean? And I'm not through. We have some single fathers. Yeah. All right. A single father is a father that raised his children alone. Right. Not with three or four baby mamas. Not with a girlfriend. Right. He's a single father. You don't have a girlfriend and sidekick. Y'all got that? A single father is just there raising his children. He don't introduce all his girlfriends. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Over his children's life. If that, that, let's define that well. If you are a single father, you are doing it alone. Don't tell nobody you're a single father. All your girlfriends raising your baby. Because they got every name. Y'all going to help me? I, I brought this for y'all to eat today. Y'all so quiet. What is the challenge of being a single father? The challenge of being a, a single dad is telling your children that this is the reason I got divorced. Or this is the reason your mother passed. You, you explain to them that the breakup is not something we're going to just take lightly. Or something we're going to just dismiss out of life. or uh, It's no big thing because you keep breaking up and breaking up. The child be confused. And when the, y'all going to help me? And when the child get grown, he think he's supposed to keep breaking up and breaking up. But you sit there and explain to your children. I didn't want to separate from mama, but me and mama didn't see a thing just like. But I love your mother and we're going to spend time with your mother. Y'all going to help me? Because we don't do that anymore. Your mama ain't all that. You don't do that. If you're going to be a good father, Holy Ghost filled father, you're not going to bash anybody. Amen. Most times it's our fault. And if you're a good father, you say, I, I'm not up the plate where I should be. Because sometimes we got to ask the Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Because sometimes we can say the wrong things and we think we're right. And they may not be right. Not only that, but if you can't handle the problem, you find support. Some children, when from mama died, they need special support. And I'm talking about spiritual support. Sometimes when children go through divorces, they need special attention. Instead of you trying to whoop them for being bad and failing in school, maybe you should find out how this feels to have a mama and a daddy separated. It don't always feel good not to see mama and daddy together. Are y'all all right? I'm in the right church. Most time when people get divorced, it be more hardship on the children than the parents. The parents make it about them, but it's more pain to the children. And we don't explain to them they're hurt because we so busy being, can I say that word, self-involved. It's all about me, myself. I was just talking to the single parents there. What did the Bible say about a good father? The Bible said in Ephesians 6 and 4 that ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And then there in Proverbs 22 and 8, say, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from what you taught them. Then what does it mean to be filled by the Spirit of God? The Holy Ghost himself is an intercessor. Amen. And when he have the Holy Ghost in your life, he intercedes when you cannot. Amen. There are
are some problems that your children have that you don't have the answer, but somebody say, God got it. Some things children go through you may not be able to explain, but somebody say, God got the answer. That's why you need the power of God to help you with your children. My God, fathers need, they need good father, spiritual fathers. Right, Ephesians 5 and 18 say, and be not drunk with wine wherein excess, but be filled with the spirit of God. When you are filled with the spirit of God, you can help your children be the best because you may not have the answer, but I bet you Jesus is on the main line. You can call him up and tell him what you want. He'll give you what you need. Amen. The Bible says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts 1 and 8. You have the power of the Lord. I remember the word of the Lord said how God anointed Jesus with power and with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He went about doing good. You can't do good till you get the anointing of God and the Holy Ghost. God got to anoint you to be a good father. You don't do it just because you have curly hair, got a job, can, can lay around with women. That don't make you anointed. You got to sit before, oh my God. You got to sit before God. Let God deal with your mind. Amen. Amen. The Bible said there in Luke 11 and 13, if you then been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more can your heavenly father give you the Holy Ghost than them that ask? Amen. So if you're a father and don't have the Holy Ghost, ask God, God, give me the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let your spirit live in me. Right. Shall I be the best father I could ever be? Let your power rule me. So when I want to say what I want to say, you can stop that. And when I need to say what I need to say, I have a holy bonus to say it. I don't know that, but listen. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance. When you got them in you, you'll be a good father. Being gentle with your children. You don't need to curse them out. Stop cursing. God didn't give your children to cuss them out. Some of us don't stop cursing, start cussing them out. Don't talk down your children. You're talking down God's blessing to you. I don't care how bad they are. God allowed you to have them. It came from God. It's a gift from God. Don't you screw it up. The Lord said he's going to give us a comforter. I'm almost through. I want to tell you about another man. And I got to quit. There was King David when he was homeless. He was a warrior then, and him and his men had went to war. And for about three days, they were out in war. And while they were out in battle, y'all going to help me. The Millicates came and stole their wives, stole their children, their sons, and their daughters, and took all that they had. And I don't know how y'all feel, but I hate to be trying to do a battle for the Lord and I go home and all my furniture gone. Out the house, they done cleaned it out. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I hate to have a report that all my loved ones have been kidnapped. Y'all gonna help me? If you wanna stir up some parents, you mess with their babies. You can take a, a dog, a dog see you messing with a puppet, you better run for your life. And if that ain't nothing, you go get a tiger and see how they feel. You can get an elephant and they got babies. If you mess with their babies, you good as dead. So now David and his men went to battle, fighting in the name of the Lord. And when they got back, everything was gone. Not only that, but they got back and saw everything was burned to the ground. The Milakites came there and stole uh, King uh, Brother David's wives, two of his wife, one that he'd been given to by Nabal, who had died, and his wife, 
Abigail was there and his other wife and their children. But the Bible said when the men got back, they cried sorely till they couldn't cry no more because they had no more strength. Not only that, but the Bible also says that they got so angry at David that they wanted to stone him. Now, don't forget that David was having a hard time because two of his wives were gone and all of his children. And I don't know about y'all little jury and your little dishes you got at the house, but I know you don't want nobody messing with your little dishes and earrings and stuff and your little special gift that you done hid under the mattress. Y'all talk to me. But I declare they took everything and left them nothing. And David was in such a mess, he went to the priest and asked the priest, can I have the e part for a minute? And I need to talk to God. And when a, a father knows that the children are in disarray, that's what you ought to do. Amen. Talk to God. Amen. And the priest allowed him to get the e part. And David prayed to God, God, please, I have two things I need to ask you. Can we, can we fight this enemy? And, 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 and the next thing is, can we win? Yeah. See, 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 you, you want to ask God, they're all good pertinent questions. When you ever have something, don't let it be one question. Make sure you got all your questions lined up. And the Lord said to David, yes, you can go fight them. And number two, yes, you can recover everything. Now, when the Lord tells you that you can recover everything, that means everything that was lost going to be found. That means everything that the devil tried to take from you, God going to give it back. And, and it ain't going to be scarred up. Y'all going to help me? Ain't going to be no loss of life and bruises. That's, that's why when your children get out of line, you got to ask God a question. Can I, oh my God, can I get my child back and will my child be all right when they come back? So when God gave David, the permission to go. David got 600 men together. And they began to go and fight for his families. And their families. But when they got to the river of Belzor, 200 of the men say, we can't go in the father. Now remember, they just got out of a battle. 600 men fighting for victory. Which the Lord had already given them. But in the midst of trying to get another victory, sometimes everybody can't go with us on our journey. We ain't looking down on you because you're weak. Because the strong are the bad, the infirmities of the weak. But glory be to God, David said, you stay right here. I'll take the other 400 and we'll go. And the Bible says that while they were on their way, not knowing who did this, not knowing who had stole their families, the Lord gave them a nugget. The Lord allowed a little Egyptian slave to be laying in the field that was sick unto death. And when David came to the little Egyptian, he looked at him and said, where are you from? And who do you belong to? And they fed him first. They didn't kill. You know, they were already mad. But they didn't kill their own blessing. Sometimes God will put little nuggets in your path. Not for you to kill, but so that you can live. It's not for you to destroy, but that it will help you. It's like a little nugget to help you keep going on to your blessing. And the little man that was sitting there said, I'm a slave of the Amalekites. I got sick and they left me here. And they left me here to die. He said, well, you give him some cluster of figs. Give him some bread, raisin bread. Feed him water. He said, because I had not eaten and drinking in three days. Now, if David hadn't listened to the Lord in prayer, he would have stayed where he was mourning. But God told him to go and pursue his enemy, number two, he told him, you're going to recover everything you lost. Now, if David had sat in the living room trying to say, Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? He wouldn't have been able to go find that young man alive. But God sent him to the young man before the young man would die. 
They gave him what he needed. He was restored. And David asked him, do you know who took my wife and church? He said, it was my boss. He said, well, lead me to him. The little slave said, I, would you do one thing for me? I'm only asking two things of you. Would you let me live and don't kill me? The next thing he asked is, when I get there, will you please not turn me over to my master? And David promised, I will not kill you myself. And I will not give you back over to your master. The young man led him to the enemies. When they got to the battle, David is sitting there picking his fingernails. He didn't get there trying to make sure my hair was nice. The Bible said David fought him from dust to the next evening and killed every last one of them except the 400 that went on Campbell running from David. And guess what? Though the Amalekites stole not only from David, they stole from Judah and many other places, but everything that they stole was sitting right there. Their wives, their children were all okay. But in their suffering, in their being faithful to God, then allowing God to speak to them, they got all that was left. And when they got it all, they got it all. God allowed them to go back when they got to the river Belzar. The Bible said the evil crowd in David's camp said, we are not giving them nothing. They didn't go and fight with us. But David said, that ain't the way we do business. If God bless me, y'all ain't gonna help me. Let's bless them too. God brought you back your family. Ain't no sense of you getting on TV acting crazy. Talking about who you gonna fight. God then gave you your family back. Everybody's life is spared. Your children are fine. Your wives are fine. And you got extra food, extra jewelry. We don't have no need to fight. When you follow God's direction, God will bless you. The Bible said when David got back, he was passing out goods to some of everybody. Not just his own soldiers got all theirs. I'm talking about if you listen, if they had killed David because they were so mad, then they wouldn't have got their family back. Amen. What am I saying to y'all? Y'all getting it? Yes, sir. Sometimes things look real rough, Amen. and you are not to lose your mind Amen. when the family is messed up. If the father of the family go crazy, what is mom and the children going to do? If the father, who's supposed to be the spiritual leader, is all post, out of medicine, all, y'all ain't going to hear me. What is the family going to do? And don't y'all dare tell me. I got to quit. But you know, I'm your father and your mother. You cannot be a father. You do not have the potential parts on your body to be a man. And you telling your child, I'm your father and your mother, is just like telling your son, you can go put on a dress. Because you all out of order. What you saying is out of order. And you leading him out of order. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? You can't be a father and a mother. Be a graceful mother. Raise him like the Lord. Y'all help me. The father ain't doing his job. That's not your problem. And fathers, when mother, you can't tell me I'm your father and your mother. You ain't no father and no mother. You ain't got no women faculties. You don't have no emotional faculties. God give that to the woman, not the man. You got to lead as a good father. And if you need help, go find some saint. See, we go find a Shaquika in them. I, ain't, I don't know who Shaquika in them. But you, you're going to mess with the wrong folk. Talking about let me raise them. You don't know what she got in her mind. You got to go find some saints. That, got, that you, you ain't got to like them, but find some saints that are godly minded. They may tell you your dress too short. You ain't got no cleave. You got too much cleave. See, you go to somebody that's going to keep your children straight. You're a good mother. She'll tell you, now you got blue hair today and orange fingernails. Your toes are yellow. You got too much going on, too many things. You may not like her, but she's trying to help you out. While you're trying to be mad, she's trying to stop looking like a fool. Because that's what the other folks think about you. 
A good mother gonna tell you when your clothes ain't the right clothes. Every color don't match everybody. Y'all gonna help me? A good father will tell your son, now you got to your pants, son, they're a little bit too tight. You're showing a little bit too much. A good father will tell you when you're sagging, son, we don't need to do that. You got a good father, he's supposed to teach his son. How to, you, you see that all this, suppose walking in your house and you the parent and they don't say hello to you? Uh, you see, because you, you ain't trained your children. You don't know about walking in your house, talking about they on a date and they even say hello to you. Tell me, baby, go back out the door. Ain't nothing going on today. Well, well what do you mean? What's wrong with your mom? Go back out the door, baby. You at the wrong house. You walked in here and then say hello to me and I'm his mama. It was no boyfriend, no girlfriend without mama. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And y'all scared of them. Don't nobody go in the house and go in the refrigerator without washing their hands. And how they, how they go in your refrigerator and they ain't spoke to you? It's your house. Y'all say something to me. Y'all so sanctified. How they do that? You let them get away with it. Train up a child. I don't care if they is 45. Have some respect for yourself. Your mother job ain't never done till you close your eyes. I don't care if your children 50, as long as you living, you got a job. Father too. I'm gonna just leave my own to you, I'm gonna let you handle. You be a good father, even your 80s. You're supposed to, and the older you get adults, parents, the older you get, God assign more wealth and wisdom to you. You are more valuable than you were in your 30s. You get to be 60 and 70 years old. You're very valuable to us because you have wisdom that we don't have. I don't have no wisdom of an 80-year-old or 70-year-old. I'm not there yet. So my good pleasure is to find out what you know about life. Are y'all going to help me? If I know everything, then can't nobody teach me nothing. I'm, I'm just five years older than you, five years older than me. You can tell me something. You hear me? Well, I don't have no education. I ain't got common sense is better than educated sense. You can have education, don't know how to fix oatmeal and grits, uh, eggs and bacon. I love my mama. My mama knew how to put everything on the table at the same time and everything was hot. When I cooked for her one time, she said, the grits ain't hot, the bread ain't hot. She said, let me go in and tell you how to do it. The bacon was hot, but that was all that was hot. She had to talk to me how to get the grits. Take a little bit long. You don't need to make the coffee right now. Make the grits. They cook longer. That bacon don't take long to make. And the toast is just a minute or two. You don't need all that. I mean, that got the toast sitting on there waiting on the grits. You listen to folk that done been there. There's some folk can cook a breakfast in five minutes and have it all on the table. And some of us take 20 minutes and just get the bread done. <laughs> Listen to good advice. You'll live longer. Is that all right? May God bless you. I didn't mean to go on this long. But I want to encourage you. Let's not bash our fathers. Sometimes it takes a good mother, a good wife to help a father alone. Sometimes men don't remember all they're supposed to do. You have to remind them about your anniversary. Amen. Sometimes you drop a flower on the floor in the middle of leave one on the dashboard of the car. Amen. Put a present on the seat. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Let the tub run over with water. But why is the tub yet run? I was waiting on you to turn it off for my bath. You have to do little stuff to help the men out sometimes. But help them be good fathers. A lot of men have not had good role models in their lives. Therefore, they can't teach nobody what they don't know. And don't you help bash them any further. They need good teaching. Iron sharpens iron. Wood does not sharpen. Y'all gonna help me? It takes iron to sharpen iron. You're a weaker vessel and you can't sharpen iron. So you have to put the right people in place to help them. Are y'all all right today? Amen. You, iron sharpens iron. You can hit on wood all you want. That iron get just dull from cutting wood. But if you get another piece of iron and sharpen it, it becomes very sharp. So when you got children, make sure the right man is over. A godly man. A spirit fed. I don't care about no curly hair. and Well, he got pretty teeth. Nobody worry about that. He may have a big belly and no teeth, but if he's a good man. Y'all all right? Look at somebody and say, I just love Pastor Cox. He's going to tell you the truth. I sure am. I ain't going to play with you. 
Because we need some good fathers. We need some good single fathers in place. Don't just because all fathers are not married, but whatever father you are, be the best. Is that all right? I love y'all today. I want y'all to be encouraged. And if you have a father living, don't you dare let this day go by and don't say happy Father's Day. Amen. And, and, it, and, and if you have a father that's going to be the Lord, tell God, thank you for my father. Well, I never knew him, but you're here, and that's what's important. You're here. Do something about that. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. I have decided to follow Jesus. The church doors open. I have decided, my God, to follow Jesus. I have decided, while we're standing, to follow Jesus. No turning back. No, no, no. Lord, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, okay. the world behind me, mama, 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 oh Lord. Now y'all hear me. I have decided. Have you made that your choice? I have decided. Oh, I have decided. Yeah. And some folks would rather have houses. Oh, 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 and, and. oh, oh, yeah, yeah, to silver. Thank you. They treasure and fuck about their soul, so I decide oh, to make Jesus my choice. We want to pray for you, and you know the road. And the going and heels are hard to come. And your heels are hard to come. I started out. My mama. It was. Let us pray. Let us pray. Kind Father, we love you today. Thank you, Lord, for this Father's Day. Thank you for every father that have paved the way for young fathers. Thank you for the role models in our churches, some on the jobs, some in the education field, some who are hard at work, some with no education, but just raising their families. But Lord, I ask that you would bless every father Bless every father, Lord, even under the sound of my voice. Bless the children to grow up to love their fathers and respect their fathers. 
Lord, we're in a world that seems to be unteachable and unkind and uncaring to others. But Lord, allow what we know about you to come forth. Allow your spirit, if you will, to take full course in the lives of our children, that they will come to you and give you their lives and be good role models, good fathers and good mothers, good sisters, good brothers, good parents. You're able to do it, and God, we trust you. I ask that you bless us as we go throughout this day. Let your blessings rule and reign over us. God, we're going to ever love you, and we're going to praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And let everyone agree, say amen. And you know the going. And the years are. Oh. the Lord a praise if you will we thank God thank you so much amen God is good and we love him and we praise him thank God for his